the, the tougher sanctions could be on the cards for Russia following the Malaysia Airlines crash on the Ukraine-Russia border. So what effect have sanctions already had on British businesses? And what would happen if the screws were tightened? Well, Michael Ross is the director of CNM Estates, a property company in London, and the founder of Fine Art Sales, and that was involved in organising a regatta in Russia, and that fell through. Michael, thanks for talking to us. Good afternoon, that's a pleasure. How, how tricky is it now? Well, my um, connection with Russia is not on the property front, but on the fine art sales business, um, which is seeking to uh, promote regattas with Olympic level sailors and world class art on their sails. Um, it was launched in London around the time of the Olympics um, and it's got a great deal of interest in particular from a, a businessman from uh, Moscow who has interests in both the UK and in Russia. Um, what has unraveled is that to put on a, a significant sized event, it, it obviously it requires a, a degree of funding and there's also a, you know, a very interesting sponsorship um, package potential for businesses that would like visibility in that particular market. Now, to have businesses invest money, um, they obviously need to see a return on investment um, and return on investment revolves around certainty um, and stability um, and sadly with uncertainty and instability uh, people won't commit funds for such a project. So it's already uncertain so you've, you, you're trying to get this business, business model up and running in Russia and it didn't quite work because it's the atmosphere is already uncertain is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay so who didn't come up with the money? Um, there, there are well, the the Russian business that I was speaking with. Um, I, I I don't want to specif specify names, to be honest, um, because I expect that in the fullness of time, you know, dialogue will continue and and you know the world moves on. Um, but British businesses that would like further exposure in Russia. Um, you know, there's, there's clearly there's an agenda to increase the amount of business internationally. Um, uh, so, you know, there will always be businesses that would like to increase their exposure in a market such as Russia um, from here. Um, and, you know, there, there will be a, it'll be on, on hold for the time being, I would think, due to what is happening politically and, and generally. Right. So, you know, I've never been to Russia and, you know, I'm sure lots of businesses do a lot of business with, with Russia. Um, UK businesses do a lot of business. What kind of money is there there? What's the opportunity for British businesses in your view? Um, London clearly is a, a, a major financial capital. Um, and a lot of business is channeled through London that, that uh, yeah, it, it, it's not necessarily physically shipping goods from one place to another, um, but there are services and there are banking type services that particularly um, do work very well between London and the rest of the world generally. Mm. So how do you view sanctions? Um, they will inevitably reduce the confidence in doing business, um, which is their intent. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's going to be a very, very difficult subject because it's a two-way street. And there is clearly, and, and I think it's been discussed you know, over the last few weeks, um, that there are needs for you know, gas and energy, etc., etc., in parts of Europe. And there will be a, 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 a double impact from sanctions on, on both sides of the equation. But you would accept the argument that if, if there are terrible states in the world, we shouldn't do business with them. It would be quite right to not do business, and therefore British business or Scottish businesses should look elsewhere to make the money. Um, I entirely hear what you're saying. However, um, as it happens, I was in Ukraine uh, in February of this year uh, when everything 
flared up in Kiev. Um, so during the few days that I was there, I was very aware of act, you know, what was happening. Uh, I was watching a lot of the news channels um, and I was following a lot of the dialogue. Um, because I have an interest in, in that part of the world, I came back to the UK and I continued watching the news uh, on, on the British channels. Um, and it was really quite disturbing because I was seeing the same video, the same footage of events in the centre of Kiev, but with a diametrically opposed commentary, um, which has led me to feel very strongly that what all of us see on the news is, is flavoured, um, and the real story, I'm not convinced that we necessarily hear or know. So I totally hear what you're saying in terms of what has happened in the recent days, which is you know, outrageous on every level. Um, but I'm still not convinced that we are getting the whole story. Mm. What do you make of the UK government's position then? David Cameron did lead a trade mission to Russia in 2011. I think there's been an, an ongoing agenda to increase business um, between the countries. Um, uh, I think that that certainly has been continued much more recently than 2011. And what do you think will happen now? Because obviously you've got a business interest in in Russia, you want this to progress, but it looks as though it will be ever more unlikely. Um, along with the vast majority of businesses, um, if it's centred, focused in the UK, looking out to the rest of the world, um, as you suggested a moment ago, there are numerous markets. Um, it's a shame to have to not progress with a market that has clearly shown an interest in a particular idea. Um, but you know, in business, you know, there are always hurdles and, and you work around them. OK, thank you very much indeed. That's uh, Michael Ross, director of CNM Estates, a property company in London and uh, founder of Fine Art Sales. They were involved in organising this regatta in Russia that fell.